Hello, my name is Bren Antrim and I'm one of the reference librarians here at Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to be doing a tour of the Academic OneFile Gale database here at SMC. In order to get to the library from the college homepage, you can mouse over Student Support and click on Library, or you can click on Student Support, scroll down to Academics, and find us here. Once at the library, there are a number of options available to you, but today we're going to a specific database, so we're going to head directly into the databases. As a reminder, before we leave this page, if you have any questions about your research, you can ask a librarian 24-7. If you contact us during a time that the college is open, then you will contact an SMC librarian. Otherwise, you'll be talking to a college or university librarian from one of the libraries in the consortium to which we belong. But anyway, you can get research help 24-7. Heading into the databases, you have a number of options on this page. You can look by topic. You can search by database type. For example, if your instructor has told you you must use journal articles, you must use newspapers, you must use books, keep in mind that many databases have all of these things included in them. They are a variety of databases, so this may not be the most useful but it is one way to sort down if you're looking for a specific format. You can also search alphabetically by title. We have 116 databases and we have them listed alphabetically with the title of the database linked to that database and a short description of what's in it. Today, however, we know which database we're going to go to and it happens to be the very first one listed. At Gale Academic OneFile provides scholarly journal articles on a variety of different topics and includes magazines, some news, some books, podcasts, videos, any number of useful items. So it's a good place to begin your search. When you go into Gale Academic OneFile, if you are not on campus or you're using your own device, you may need to log in with your Corsair Connect or Canvas login. Then you head down and you have a couple of different ways you can approach your search. If you're just beginning and you're not really sure what your topic is, you can go to a specific topic and you can browse it and see what various topics are within this broader topic. And if you find something that looks interesting, you can click on it and it will tell you for this specific topic, the endocrine system and hormones, we have academic journals, we have magazines, we have news. You can sort by the date of the publication, since this is medicine, maybe the last three to five years, by subject headings within this particular topic, by the kind of document, whether it is an article, a report, a cover story, an interview, etc. You can look for specific publication if you have a journal in mind, even sections within those. So I'm looking for um, a news report, for example. And you can search within your search results for specific items. And see if they get information. And that will narrow it down to a subset of articles within the original topic. So that's one way that you can do it. Another way that you can do it, and the way that most students approach it, is you have a topic coming in. So say I want to find out about artificial intelligence. When I search that out, as you notice, you get a much broader range of results. You get many, many academic journals, which are scholarly and peer-reviewed. You get magazines, which are for the general public. You get essential overviews, you get books and book chapters, you get articles, editorials, and other information from newspapers, you get images, you get videos, and you get audio files. So I would start in this case with the essential overview. And this will tell me all about sort of how this database approaches it, looking at social media in daily life. Notice that this is not an overview of artificial intelligence. This is an overview that includes artificial intelligence. So this may not be something that I want because it might be too broad. However, when I look at my results, I have many too many. So I want to filter it down. Because artificial intelligence has exploded with the launch of ChatGPT in November of 2022, 
I might first look at my publication date and say, since this is June of 2023 when this video is being made, maybe I just want to look in the past year. And I apply that filter and suddenly I still have a lot, but I have many fewer than I used to have. And then I might want to look within that for specific subject headings that are attached to that. Of these hundreds of thousands of articles, only 3,000 are specifically about artificial intelligence. So much like that overview that was broader but mentioned artificial intelligence, many of the initial articles that you get mention your topic but are not specifically about your topic. Filtering your results by your subject heading takes out all of those things that are peripheral to your topic and leaves only those articles that are about your topic. Okay. That cuts it down, but I still have a lot. So at this point, I might want to take um, a search within this topic. I don't need 5,000 or 15,000 articles. I need maybe 100 or 150. So I might add to this, how is artificial intelligence applied by and with college students? So when I search within this topic, it cuts it down considerably and it makes it much more specific to my search. It gives me about 60 peer-reviewed articles, a couple of general interest articles, and about 80 news articles. So at this point, I look at my assignment. And if my instructor has said, you must use scholarly journal articles, I would go over here to the filters again, and I would say, give me only peer-reviewed journal articles. And you notice that this is even fewer journal articles than originally showed. So some of those journal articles that are considered academic are not actually peer-reviewed. So you have to be careful. If you're looking for scholarly articles, you want peer-reviewed journals. And then I take a look at some of these and see if there's something that looks interesting. So this might be quite useful. This is in the journal Societies, so it's coming from the social perspective and less the um, programming perspective. Um, or This one, Unpacking the Black Box, this is in Educational Technology and Society, so it looks at the overlap between technology and society, and it's relatively recent, and it is a report. So, let's take a look at that one. Once we find an article that we like, it will tell us about it. It will give us an abstract or a short description of what the author or the database editors consider to be important about this article. An abstract is different than um, an annotation. An annotation comes from the reader. So when you do an annotated work cited, you are telling the readers of your essay why you considered this article to be important to your research. But an abstract is written by the author or um, the database editors, and it determines um, for you what they consider to be the important points of the article for all researchers in this area. So what I recommend when you're doing research is take a look at the abstract, and if it looks good, save it, print it, or email it, and then find more articles, and keep gathering articles before you start to read and evaluate. And then take a break, and then go back and evaluate all of your articles together, and you will find new insights and a deeper understanding of your topic this way, which will make it easier to write your essay or your speech, for example. So then it tells you a little bit about that information, goes into your topic in some depth. And this is a very extensive article. At the end of the article, it gives you the citations that they use, so it gives you other places that you can look for. Then it gives you an option of help with your citation. MLA, APA, for example. Please make sure to fix your citation when you put it in your paper because sometimes the robot doesn't quite get it right. So you want to make sure that you use the example given to you by your instructor. And then if I want this article and I decide that I do, I can save it to my Google Drive, I can save it to my OneDrive, I can email it to myself, download it, or print it. While I'm here, also, I can listen to it. I can change the display options, make the font larger, smaller, translate to another language if necessary. And I can look at related articles to this topic that the database will present to me. 
as well as related subjects. And the difference between these two is these are articles that have relevance based on your search terms. These are those search terms themselves. So if I click this, I'll look at the article. If I click this, it will research the database for anything with a assigned subject heading. So this is if I want to get really specific and look at this individual article. This is if I want to broaden my search back out, say I don't get enough results and I want to look at anything else I can find on this topic. So it's a way to use the database tools to make your search better for your use. Now say I want this, so I'm going to email it to myself. So I sent it to myself. In my subject line, I'm going to change that and I'm going to say AI from academic one file. So later when I'm looking through my email, I know what it is. I want to send it as a PDF. If you send it full text, it will often strip out um, any graphics or images that are included in it. So by sending it as PDF, I retain all of the information and I send it off. Once I have my article, then I can go back to my results and find more articles or go back further and find news articles or revise my search and add other terms to it. So this is a brief introduction to how you use Gale Academic OneFile in your research. Please ask a librarian if you have any questions during your search and you need assistance and that is always available here at the library homepage under Ask a Librarian. Good luck with your research!